Well, hello. Welcome to another week of Digi Sis in a Digi World. I am Ina Montgomery, founder and executive director of Urban Tech. Uh, for the one or two people who may be following me, I apologize. <laughs> for last week, um, I just was moving at a fast pace. And unfortunately, I just forgot. And I thought I had set my alarm to 4.30 as a reminder. So I have checked my alarm to make sure that it will go off at, four. it's got its own special ring and everything. So it's gonna start going off at 4.30 on Thursday. So no matter where I am, if I got a pullover, stop what I'm doing, find me a space and get ready for my show at five o'clock. So thank you for your patience. Uh, if you're out there, I appreciate you. Uh, and again, I apologize for uh, last week and me not uh, being here. And I appreciate Mr. Walker and his patience with me as I uh, continue on this radio show. And uh, as I do each week, uh, try to bring you some good content. Uh, some has been a little bit my opinion. Some uh, I'm trying to provide some information. Uh, but all radio shows are, if you will, uh, to a degree, opinion. So what I wanted to talk about today, um, I wanted to touch on, since I am, uh, I want to be Black historian buff, or at least a uh, admirer of Black history, I want to talk about this whole issue about patriotic education that the president is pushing and that is to counter uh, Project 1619 uh, that the New York Times sponsors that is making an attempt, if you will, to provide information about uh, the actual way that history played out. So if I read the definition here, it says uh, the 1619 project is an ongoing project developed by the New York Times uh, which aims to reframe the country's history by placing the consequences of slavery and the contributions of Black Americans at the very center of the national narrative. The project was timed for the 400th year anniversary of the arrival of the first enslaved Africans in the Virginia colony in 1619 and suggests that this date represents the nation's birth year, uh, quote, end quote. It is an interactive project directed by Nicole Hannah Jones, a reporter for the New York Times, uh, with contributions by the newspaper's writers, including essays on the history of different aspects of contemporary American life, which the authors believe have roots in slavery and its aftermath. So that's the general overall definition of the 1619 project. And so I, um, I, I definitely believe in the project because as we know, in most history books in today's uh, American schools, it goes from slavery. And I don't know when they actually start. It might be 1800s. Um, and then it moves on uh, from there. Black folks are not mentioned until the civil rights era in the 1960s. Uh, you might find one or two textbooks that may do the late 50s. Uh, but it's as if, you know, we just weren't around uh, for that gap of time uh, until the Martin Luther King uh, March on Washington in 1963 in Washington, D.C., so with that in mind, uh, just a couple of things I just want to raise up for today for your consideration. Uh, I was found an article in Education Week. Uh, it is titled Majority Black School Closer to Shedding Confederate Name. And so you have uh, a lot of schools across the United States that in the light of the Black Lives Matter uh, issues and the unfortunate uh, decision yesterday for that grand jury not to indict uh, all three of the officers for the murder of Breonna Taylor. Uh, cell phone cameras have really put the light on what we have known to be true for years, that there is police brutality, 
uh, some people feel that the KKK just simply took off their hoods and just uh, joined the police force. And therefore you have that mindset and you've got police brutality and the thought that it's okay if you kill a black man, it's okay if you pull them over, if you harass them, if you beat them, uh, that brutality is okay because uh, quote unquote, that's what those uh, N-words deserve and that's what they understand. So we know that now that uh, light has been shown uh, and some white folks, if you will, have become woke, uh, they understand that uh, we do have our own history and that our history is not being uh, taught in schools. I think I've covered that before. So this is something more recent. Uh, it just says uh, here where majority black school in Mississippi is one step closer to being renamed for a black leader or activist rather than a Confederate general. So in Jackson Public uh, Schools in 2017, uh, the district removed the name of Confederate figures from some of their schools that included Lee Elementary, named after Robert E. Lee, and about 96% of the school students are black. And so talk about insult to injury. Once uh, black kids become aware of those Confederate figures and what they represented in regards to uh, slavery, uh, being slave owners, and believing in the concept of slavery, uh, they get upset. So to know that here you are a black student at a 96% black school, and it's named after a former slave owner. Uh, so that just does not sit well. And I don't think it's fair for our kids to have to endure uh, such an insult. Um, the other issue is uh, all the uh, Confederate statues that were taken down. Now, my only beef with that is that the, uh, not that, I don't wanna say not that it matters, but, but that was money uh, that was basically torn down, if you will. Um, and, and I can go into detail if anybody's interested in what I mean when I say it's money, but I think, you know, they, they could have taken down the statues. I know there was a lot of angst, a lot of anger, uh, a lot of emotions around what is happening to Black folks in America as far as poli police brutality and to have that Confederate statue or figure, people just did not want to see it anymore. They just wanted it down. And therefore, that's what they did. Uh, so they just, they have torn them down. Um, and again, just like they can't erase our history, we can't erase their history. And I think actually we could, we should take um, delight in the fact that we did win the Civil War. Uh, uh, love, if you will, did prevail over hate and evil, which is what the Confederate flag and the Confederate um, uh, generals represented. They wanted to keep Black folks enslaved. Um, and so, uh, again, if you don't know that history, uh, gosh, what is it? There is a monument here in the state of Missouri uh, when I have driven from Kansas City to the George Washington um, Carver Monument in Diamond, Missouri. And if you've never gone, that is definitely a day trip. Uh, leave early, uh, six, seven o'clock, takes two hours to get there but a great, uh, in fact, it's a national historic park. So it is preserved and kept by uh, the national park system. And it is a great space to learn more about George Washington Carver. But on the way there, and I can't remember now, and if I remember next week, I'll let you know or reach out to me and I'll, I'll find it. But there was a battle of the mound or round or something like that. And it talks about the connection between the Civil War and the states of Missouri and Kansas. And so uh, basically there was a war, as you know, Missouri was the last state to free the slaves. And so there was a, a semblance of a war between Kansas and Missouri over the same issue of slaves getting their freedom. Uh, Missouri, of course, was holding on. Kansas was not. Uh, and so anyway, there's a monument uh, about that particular war. So there's a lot of history. So this whole issue that the uh, 45, President 45, wants to uh, uplift that hatred and that history uh, is very, um, uh, it's, it's very unsettling. And the fact that uh, he now is looking to rush through a Supreme Court justice 
um, so that the majority vote on the Supreme Court, uh, which is the highest law of the land, if you will. Um, so if there's any contest or any debate over this conflict between 1619 and the patriotic education, then if uh, it gets to the Supreme Court, then the patriotic education will win out and the history of, and the contributions, the rich history and contributions of black folks will no longer be available uh, for people to learn about. So that's very unsettling. Um, so when I was doing research for this show, and some of you guys have seen this, when we, when we look at like the day of, uh, in the life of any person here in the United States, and we are uh, daily interacting with the, with the inventions and the contributions of Black inventors. And so this is not an exhaustive list at all. This is just a couple of names you're probably already familiar with. Uh, we go, we, we drive, we see the traffic light uh, created by Garrett, uh, invented by Garrett C. Morgan. Uh, the potato chip, George Crumb. Uh, James Fortin revolutionized the sale making business. And that in and of itself is interesting because, and, and we do have black sailors. So don't mistake me. Uh, I'm not going to say black folks don't sail because I hate that saying because we do everything. We were the first cowboy. Um, because the, uh, the, the, the white um, landowners were afraid to catch that quote unquote wild animal. So they sent their slave out to do it. And so we were the first uh, cowboys. Lonnie Johnson, if you've ever had a chance to play with the super soaker and uh, you know get your, your cousins all wet and on a hot day or people in your neighborhood, uh, that was invented by a black man. Louis Latimer invented the uh, long lasting light bulb and drafted the drawings that helped Alexander Graham Bell receive a patent for the telephone. So there was always a um, question about that, if you will. But in a lot of cases with uh, slavery, although these black men and black women were enslaved, they were still intelligent, as we know. Uh, well, because we know originally we created the, uh, or we built the pyramids, but that's a whole nother show. So um, Louis Latimer, uh, Otis Boykin, invented uh, resistors for pacemakers. Uh, Richard Spikes invented an automatic gear shift for the car. So uh, initially there was no gear shift and because of Richard Spikes, we now have that. George Carruthers invented the far ultraviolet camera spectrograph, which is the first moon-based observatory and is responsible for picturing Halley's Comet for the first time. Uh, we know that, let me throw some sisters in here, Katherine Johnson with NASA, had it not been for her being that human mathematician or, or that human computer or calculator, uh, whatever she was referred to as, um, we would not have made it to the moon. And then to look at all the trust that that movie uh, depicted that the astronaut had in her uh, to calculate the, uh, what was it, no-go, go zone uh, to come uh, between Earth and outer space, uh, that little small space that had to be calculated or that she calculated uh, so well. Then we've got Robert Pelham. He invented the tally machine uh, for the census. So right now we're doing the census in 2020 uh, and we've done this throughout the years. Um, and I don't know if you were aware or not that Robert Pelham, spelled P-E-L-H-A-M, made that invention. Elijah McCoy invented the automatic lubricator for oiling uh, steam engines, allowing trains to run faster and longer without stopping for maintenance, uh, the originator, originator, which is called the real McCoy. So here we have just a sampling of Black women uh, gosh, I wish I could think of the name of the, the one Black woman uh, who I always also lift up because she was the one responsible for the removal of cataracts in the eye. Her family uh, had diabetes, just as I do, and she was able to come up with a method to remove cataracts out of their eyes um, because when you have cataracts, 
it makes your ver your uh, your vision very blurred. So the importance, all that to say, the need and importance of Black history being taught in school uh, in support of the 1619 Project is definitely uh, very critical. And so this is one thing that I do plan to follow, that I do plan to get behind. Uh, the other thing is when we talk about technology and the Black history um, that is available, it is, it is being skewed, if you will, online. Uh, because if you do research on Garrett C. Morgan, I remember this when my niece was in high school, it said, well, America gives him credit for the invention of the traffic light. But the traffic light was actually created by some white guy over in Britain, Europe, wherever it is. Uh, so we have to be very cognizant that in this digital world, they are trying to take history as 45 is trying to do and either suppress it, the real history, to either suppress it or to rewrite it as if we had no contributions, as if uh, you know we don't matter. And so that's why it's so important as we say Black Lives Matter, that is such a powerful, I mean, just three simple powerful words that just resonate with so many of us who have experienced microaggressions on behalf of white people. So many of us who have been ignored, so many of us who have had ideas who have, who have had our ideas stolen. Our lives matter, our thoughts matter, our contributions matter, our intelligence matter. And so I am definitely in support of the 1619 Project. And I'm also aware of the uh, strategy, again, to suppress Black history uh, on the internet specifically. I also learned about, and uh, shame on me for not pulling it up, but I was talking to somebody the other day about the uh, the internet and she mentioned a, uh, what time is it? Yeah, I got time. I'm gonna go look for that while I am here talking. And I was not aware of this black man who has made a major contribution to uh, the internet. And so she sent me the link. She sent me um, a video also that went into uh, telling his story. And so here I am as I am speaking. Oh my gosh, where is it? It is a story of Emmett J. McHenry. Oh my gosh, here it is. So if you're interested in that, um, he, uh, let me see, founder of Network Solutions, and that's how it came up. Now my memory is being jogged. So I was just uh, explaining uh, her group of Black kids out of Las Vegas will be, uh, are currently rather, developing the new site for urbantech.org. And I just happened to mention, oh, I'm using Network Solutions. And so she was like, oh, Ina, she's a Black woman. Did you know that Network Solutions was founded by Emmett what did I just say? Emmett J. McHenry. And I said, no. And she said, you will be so surprised to know this story. And so I was very surprised. I've gone through, I've read it. Uh, there's a whole video and I'll probably have it up on my website once the website's uh, finished because on the new and improved urbantech.org website, you will be able to find information that I'm sharing now but you definitely will be able to find the contributions of Blacks in the area of technology, if nothing else. Uh, but if you think about it, everyday inventions are technical. So I'm looking forward to providing that information. So anyway, I was excited. And so when you go and you learn uh, more about Mr. McHenry, he also had his hands on the early, early days of the internet. Um, and he uh, is still speaking. Uh, so he is still around and he is still speaking. Um, and I may have a podcast or I may have an online webinar uh, this fall where I will have him on and feature him uh, on my website as well. So I am looking forward to that. So the, um, let me see, 
Another article I thought was interesting that I came across, um, does the America's public owe black uh, people reparations and didn't get a chance to jump all into that article. But uh, I think each person has their own response to that. I think in and of itself, the fact that so much was stolen from us because it talks about the white mobs. It talks about our communities that were just burned down you know, we were just minding our own business, just trying to survive in a land that we were uh, brought to, uh, taken from our homeland, and uh, just never understood the, you know, the hate and the resentment towards uh, Black people who were enslaved, and for those who were able to either purchase their freedom or after they were freed, worked hard because, you know, Black men and Black women worked uh, sun up to sundown, just trying to make ends meet. And sometimes they didn't, but they persevered. They continued, they were resilient, and uh, they were determined to have a better day for their kids, if nothing else, because I think they had already determined they were not gonna see a better day. And they go through all this work and all this trouble for a white mob at night, uh, the cowards, of course, only come out at night to burn down what they had already put up. And so does America owe, um, oh, here, this is a sentence I was looking for. Mobs of white citizens often burned down black communities, schools, while government officials stood by and watched. Local officials systematically charged black property owners exorbitant taxes for schools their children were not allowed to attend. And in the years following the Brown versus Board of Education decision, states in mass fired black teachers without cause as part of an effort to prevent white teachers at integrated schools from losing their jobs. Um, and again, that's an excerpt from the article, uh, do, American, do America's public schools owe black people reparations uh, the next sentence here says, since 1968, the number of Black students graduating from high schools has climbed more than 40%, and the Black middle class, as a result, has more than doubled in size. But academic outcomes for Black students in recent years have stagnated and in some states worsened. And again, that's a whole nother conversation uh, because at some point, families have to be engaged in their students' education. I don't believe in blind faith or blind trust where you say, oh, my child's going to school and you send them outside, they catch the bus, they go to school and then there's no parent engagement, there's no parent knowledge on what's actually happening in the classroom. Is that white teacher ignoring your, your child if you're in a predominantly white school district? If you're in a predominantly black school district with a white teacher, is that white teacher really teaching your kid? Is that white teacher really giving your kid all that they can, or are they just shrugging their shoulders as I personally have seen some white teachers do saying it doesn't matter anyway because they don't get it or they're not smart enough or society is not really set up for their success. So we're just kind of holding them during the day and I'm gonna get my paycheck, get in my car and drive back out to wherever I live. Cause all white folks don't live in the suburbs. And so I don't even go with that. But, uh, and, and all of them are not affluent or rich either. Uh, they just like to think that they are. So anyway, I digressed uh, coming back. So yes, I believe you can uh, read that article. I think it's a great article to check out. And um, we talked about the Confederate flag so yeah, so my concern right now, again, is the use of technology to change the narrative, to skew the actual truth and to change the story. And so the challenge for us, as it is all the time, we just can't rest on our laurels. We cannot let this uh, patriotic, quote unquote, patriotic education go through. It's, it's just gotta stay talk uh, up until November 3rd, and everybody that I know is hoping November 3rd, there will be a change of guard because I'm not sure where this train's going right now. Nobody knows, but we all know it's, 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 it's going to wreck. 
And either way, uh, either side, if you will, it's not going to be happy with the outcome come November 3rd. And even with that, because of the absentee ballots, uh, there's already discussion that the results will not be on election night, maybe a couple of days, maybe up to a week, maybe up to two weeks, depending on the state and how they process absentee ballots uh, or voting by mail, however you want to define that uh, in that particular state. So that's what's going on. Uh, just looking at the uh, concern, the grave concern, if you will, for the patriotic uh, education, which we know will exclude the contributions of Black folks. We just cannot sit on our laurels and have that happen. We already have too many generations of kids, who uh, Black kids, who don't think Blacks have done anything. They think that we were passive during slavery um, and uh, because they're not being taught their history in schools. And we know what will be what would happen if they were in fact taught their history in schools oh my gosh they would feel good about themselves they would have some self-confidence they would have high self-esteem because they would know the greatness of the people who they come from and the things that they have done and uh, there are groups uh, a, a lot of groups of people who just can't accept that so we have got to stay diligent on this whole thing. We have got to get out and vote. We have got to get out to vote. We have got, and we got to vote for the right party who's going to slow this train down. Um, I don't need to say it outright. Uh, I am an independent. However, I know that the party that 45 represents does not have the interest of this country. It just doesn't have the interest of this country. And so, we have the opportunity uh, to vote, to make that change. And in addition to that uh, change, we have to do, as I say every week, we've got to do the work. We've got to put the time in. We have got to do the work. So I think that's enough for you to take in, for you to digest. And um, I am looking forward to uh, continuing in some form of fashion this conversation. Um, or sharing information with you uh, as uh, as things move forward. I, I, I like the work of the 1619 Project. I think it's necessary. And I also think it's ridiculous for 45 to say uh, that uh, schools that teach 1619 will be defunded. And as a lot of the news reports are showing, uh, or, or reporting, I'm sorry, uh, within the past day or two, when he came out with that whole patriotic education thing, he said very emphatically during his campaign, and really up till this moment, that he would never get engaged with education, that education was up to educators and that of this and that of that. And now he's got his foot all up in it uh, to please, uh, again, uh, because we know he really does not care, but it is to pull at the heartstrings of his supporters and to get them fired up. And for any people who are on the fence saying, you know, we don't want our kids learning black history in school and da da this and da da that, uh, he's appealing to them as well. So we know that the fight out here is real. Uh, history is making every day uh, as this corona continues. Uh, I would like to uh, pull some things together next week for uh, technology. I've had the chance to do some distribution with uh, one of the local school districts here, laptop distribution, and some of these, the, these parents are tired. They are exhausted uh, because they can't work and teach their child, and they can't work and be at home with their child. So I know one of the school districts will uh, made the decision that they will be opening in November, I believe K through three or K through four. Uh, so that's going to be good. Uh, but when all the schools will be open, not quite sure. Jackson County is a county. Uh, we are still in the red zone. Missouri is still continuing to go up. In fact, the uh, governor and his wife now are, are, are in quarantine because of Corona. So this thing is very real. Um, and this is not some form of the flu. This is a virus that nobody has yet to define, and nobody definitely yet has a virus, 
I'm sorry, a, um, <laughs> a virus. Nobody yet has a cure uh, vaccine. That's the word vaccine for uh, for what's going on. So we have to remain strong. We have to remain prayerful for those of you uh, who believe that there is a higher power, just as I do. Um, and so we, we just need to um, just stay on top of things and we can't sit on our laurels and just let things happen. So that is it for today. I am Ina Montgomery and I've got a little gnat run around here, but it's okay. But I am a digi sis in a digi world. I am founder and executive director of Urban Tech, soon to be urbantech.org. Uh, fingers crossed in the next two weeks, the new website will be launched. And I look forward to chatting with you guys next week. Have a good evening.